For most of my life now, I've been hearing people talk about human rights. Presumably they've been talking about them since the UN Declaration of Human Rights was made official in 1948. The UN codified rights, or maybe they just codified the idea of rights. People have been talking about rights for hundreds of years now. They often use human rights as a rallying cry, or as a goal and ideal. I don't really have an, a problem with most of the rights delineated in the UN document. I just don't think they're real. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. There are all kinds of rights. For example, you've got legal rights, which means government is supposed to uphold them. Usually it doesn't, so they're not so useful. Then you've got other kinds of rights. No one upholds them. No one can even agree what they are. So they're not very useful either. And yet we keep talking about them all the time. Why? My guess is because they sound like a useful rhetorical tool. You can shout, I have rights, or I know my rights, or everyone has the right to something, and it sounds like a powerful statement. It's a conversation ender, because it means someone is allowed to do something, and you're not allowed to stop them. Except, someone can still stop you, if they really want to. And they will. People seem to think that being a legal right means you can force the state to uphold it. How? Because it says so on the constitutions and the laws you're told to believe in? Yeah, but still, how? If anything, government is the people taking away your rights. Government is how people concentrate and formalize power, and that necessarily means taking power away from others. Laws, rights, and constitutions are examples of formalizing that power. When using power, states do not take rights into account. They're always there on paper, but never there in reality. States and other powerful people act in their own interest, always. That's, this point is fundamental to understanding the state. They do not work for you. They never have. Their interest is to make you think you have rights in the abstract, and that the job of the state is to protect those rights. But in any given case, rights remain abstract, a luxury that we just can't afford in this particular case at this particular time. Go ahead and look at any of the rights you supposedly have and tell me specifically what the state does to uphold them for all people or all citizens. Do people have the right not to be slaves? Well, according to you and me, probably yes. According to the UN Declaration, yes, of course. So when will the UN descend on the US prison? Or the big corporation operating anywhere? There's a good chance the device you're watching this on, or the food you're eating, or the clothes you were wearing were made with slave labor. So do corporations uphold human rights in their labor practices? No. Do governments force them to follow these ideals when they find out they've been violated? No. How about torture? Torture is absolutely illegal under international law and goes against pretty much all laws and constitutions you can find. But it happens in prison. It happens to protesters in police custody. It happens in war. It happens to anyone the state labels a terrorist. In fact, if you ask 
Meher Arad or anyone in Guantanamo Bay or anyone in any of the CIA black sites around the world, you know innocent people get detained indefinitely without trial and tortured. But hey, I'm sure when the War of Terror is over in 300 years, we'll all get our rights back. We keep getting told we should know our rights, too. You've heard that. You gotta know your rights. But if they aren't upheld, what use are they? Didn't Sandra Bland and Philando Castile and all the other people gunned down by police have rights? Do you really think the cops that murdered them didn't know about their rights? Oh, sorry. Oh, I forgot. You have rights, don't you? Ooh, really shouldn't have killed you, should I? Police don't need to think about your rights because power will not be restrained by words on paper. Which, by the way, is the whole problem with believing a constitution can hold back the state. <laughs> hold back the state. It creates the state. Expecting a state to respect your rights is like expecting a lion to go vegan. It's not in their interest, but more importantly, it's not in their nature. There are no vegan lions, at least not as far as I know. There are no states that exist to protect rights. It's a fantasy. So what's the point of rights? Well, they may have been made with the best of intentions, well, I say made, they may have been proposed with the best of intentions by philosophers over the past few hundred years, but nowadays they're little more than the state's excuse for its continued existence. If states draw up statutes of rights and freedoms and declare they're going to protect those rights, people who don't question these things will go, great, now we all have rights. And they can continue to believe that protecting our rights is the job of the state, or even its main reason for existing. This is not just an example of a disconnect between rhetoric and reality. This is the difference between why reasons of power exist and the propaganda they use to justify their existence. They are opposites. Human rights are about freedom and safety. States exist to use us and take from us and attack us when we find out the truth. There seems to be another reason for human rights discourse, though. I've noticed that when the US and UK form a coalition to declare war on some people, human rights abuses always come up. It's not a sufficient condition for war, but it's always part of the excuse. Even when the purpose isn't to start a war, the term human rights abuses or something similar is always spoken by presidents or prime ministers of countries like US and Canada and the UK when they go to visit places like China. They never do anything about anyone's rights, anything about any abuses that they, they can even point to. Not because they can't do anything, because they might have a bit of influence, but because the words were never intended to translate into action. It's just a perfunctory exercise. We're going to China, so I'll say something vague about human rights, then they'll get the chance to deny it and call us hypocrites. And then we'll talk about trade. In this way, they can pretend their human rights scorecards are clean, and thus draw a line between the good countries and the bad countries. I, I really used to believe that way. We're supposed to think of these governments as champions of human rights, which couldn't be further from the truth. Chelsea Manning didn't expose war crimes to let people think the U.S. doesn't commit them. If these governments cared about human rights, why did they sell billions in weapons to Saudi Arabia so it could mass murder people in Yemen? Why do they still use white phosphorus and depleted uranium in war zones? Why do they imprison people without trial and torture them in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places? 
Where are all the indigenous women the RCMP has been kidnapping and killing with impunity? And why do quite peaceful protesters, and you can, you can watch videos of it, peaceful protesters in, in all of these so-called democratic countries being pepper sprayed, beaten, and arrested every year? I could go on, of course, but the point is, why the hell would we put any hope at all on states to defend rights when they're the ones violating them every day? Human rights are a vague suggestion, not a goal. They only exist within a state framework. They seem to be one of those things that's there to reassure us. Don't worry. You have the right to things. It's written. It's permanent. But they're not backed up by action. As long as people can take away your rights, in other words, as long as there are people who have power over you, the whole idea is meaningless. The closest thing we will ever have to rights is if we destroy all the hierarchies and inequalities that enable some people to rule over others. While some people are not free, none of us are free, because we're all at the mercy of the powerful. We will never pass laws and create reforms that force powerful people to do what we want them to do. But we can strip them of their power by force. If you're not ready to do that, okay. Most people aren't. But please stop believing in this fantasy that someone is defending your rights.